Welcome to this demonstration of the Concrete 5 e-commerce system. Uh, today we're going to go over how to add a product to the e-commerce system. Concrete 5 is fantastic for this because it's so easy to add uh, new products to your website and to uh, put them into the proper pages uh, accordingly. Uh, we're currently logged into a uh, Concrete 5 website that has the e-commerce add-on installed. So we're going to go into our dashboard system here. We're going to view the full dashboard. In here we can see the different uh, tools that we have for the e-commerce add-on. To add a product, we'll simply click on products. And then we get a list of the different products that have already been added to the system. If we want, we can click on any product to edit the product. We can click on Edit Properties to uh, view the properties that a uh, product has. This is the uh, title for the product. Here we add content uh, for the product. <clears throat> we have to make sure that a product is enabled. If uh, for any reason we want to disable a product, but we don't want to necessarily delete it, for example, maybe it's something that's seasonal, but it will be back uh, next season, we can disable it, which will take it off of the website, and then at any point we can enable it, which will re-enable it. Uh, we can set our, our prices uh, for the product. We can set sell prices for a product as well. You can set a quantity for the product. For most uh, websites, you want to set an unlimited uh, quantity. If you do want to uh, put a quantity in, you can do so, and you can even have Concrete 5 uh, count down the number of products and once it reaches uh, reaches zero you can do certain settings in concrete 5 to give messages to users to let them know that the product currently isn't available you can uh, allow a, a negative quantity <coughs> uh, for this um, most websites wouldn't have need of this particular uh, tool but it is available for those who would need it uh, charging sales tax if you need to charge sales tax for your product you can click yes there's another section in Concrete 5 uh, e-commerce tools that you can uh, set the sales tax amount. We won't be covering that in this video. Uh, the minimum units to buy for some products you may uh, require a minimum of five to be purchased <clears throat> in order to be able to order it. So you can set a minimum uh, number or amount of products that are, are purchased. The uh, enable tier pricing. For tier pricing, what you can do is you can set pricing based on the quantity that's purchased. So for example, I can say I want to have one to three products be five dollars and I can add a tier and then I can say from four to six is another price and I can say from seven to unlimited amount is just four dollars so with that uh, price up here goes away when we add tier pricing but that's a way that you can uh, offer discounted pricings uh, to your users um, physical good when we check that to yes additional uh, functionality appears such as this uh, shipping information if I set that to no um, this is turned off down here. Most of the time, you probably want to have it as a physical good, but, and definitely you need to have that turned on if you're going to be doing shipping. Requires login. If you have a, a requires login turned to yes, what will happen is when a person adds products to their cart, you'll see a message if they're not logged in that they need to log in or they need to create an account in order to purchase the products. <clears throat> requires shipping, uh, just as you would. Uh, I think if you have that turned on, then uh, a product uh, will have some shipping requirements around it. In another section of uh, Concrete 5, you can uh, set shipping costs and, and so forth. We won't be covering that in this video. Uh, weights, dimensions, um, those are more often not used um, for add-ons such as the uh, FedEx shipping add-on. There's also a USPS and a US uh, or UPS 
add-on available and these weights and dimensions will be used as a part of the calculation to figure out the, the shipping price. Uh, shipping modifiers, <clears throat> this is more often used if you're using like a flat rate shipping. So let's say you're going to charge $5 flat rate shipping for all products. But for some products, they're much bigger and so they're going to cost a little bit more. So you can use the shipping modifier to add additional cost to the shipping. Uh, so you could say, okay, it's flat rate shipping $5, except for these three products, it's $2 more. So I add a shipping modifier. And in the checkout, that two would dollars would be added to the five dollars set for the flat rate shipping and what the user would see is simply seven dollars for shipping the uh, product type is this is a uh, other product attributes and there's a place in the concrete five tools that uh, you can create product attributes a product attribute may be things that you want to display to the user um, for example maybe there's a um, a um, a special um, setting or a, uh, I'm trying to think of a, of a good example here <clears throat> of some different options that are available uh, or you can even use the, the product attributes to group things into different categories so if, uh, on this website there's a retail and a wholesale option and so by that product type we can then sort on the uh, product list block different products that are in different product types so we can say we only want to display wholesale products and so there are a lot of different things you can do with product attributes uh, groups and sets uh, this particular site isn't really using uh, groups and sets but if you want to group products together or uh, in, uh, by certain categories or so forth you can uh, set that up in a different section of uh, the e-commerce product add-on and that will allow you to group and display products by those groups and sets. After you've added all the, the information for your product, you simply come down here and click Save. And then it's updated on the website. If I want to add a new product, we can simply come back to the Products page. And we click this Add Product button. And basically the, the process is exactly the same as we went through before when we were modifying a product. So for example, we can add a title and we can give it a description. You want to make sure this is always set to enable. Give your product a price and we can give it a sell price. Make sure we have that set to unlimited in most cases. Um, allow negative quantity, no. Physical goods, yes. Requires login, no. Once we've got all of that information set, we can click Add. Now, at this point, it's going to ask us where do we want the product detail page to be displayed on the website. For this particular website, we've got most of the products being displayed under this shop page. So I click shop and what's going to happen is a fourth page is going to set be set up under here that's going to be named test so it's asked me you have selected the page shop if this is correct click ok i click ok and our new product is added now at this point our product doesn't have an image so i'll simply come up here to images i'm given an option for a thumbnail image an alternate image and a full image Typically, the, alt the thumbnail image is used in the product list block where all the different products are listed out. <clears throat> the alternate image, you can use an alternate image where if you want, you can mouse over an image and it will flip to our second image. And so the alternate Im uh, thumbnail image can be kind of fun. The full image is more often not used on the product detail page. And uh, so that would be the full big version of our image. Well, oftentimes you use the same image for the thumbnail as the full image, but there's no reason you couldn't uh, change those up. So if I click Choose Image, the File Manager opens up. I can choose our image. Then we've added our images. Additional images uh, can be used in more than one way. It can be used as um, the uh, gallery slideshows. 
that are a part of the Concrete 5 e-commerce add-on. So a lot of different options there. After we get done, we click Save. Customer Choices. A lot of powerful things you can do with uh, customer choices. Uh, so for example, we've set up a, a customer choice here, which is size. And uh, with that uh, size, for example, if it's a shirt, a person could choose small, medium, large. Um, you can require a person to choose a size as a part of the checkout. If you want, you could say, okay, extra, extra large is going to cost $1 more. So lots of different options. Um, to add a new option, you do it here. These are the different options that, that are available. And lots of different things you can do with them. We're not going to spend a lot of time with that right now. Last thing here is uh, duplicate. The duplicate tool is kind of handy. So let's say you have two products that are very similar. <clears throat> you can add the, the, new, the one product in, click duplicate. And what it's going to do is create an exact du uh, duplicate of whatever product you're on. So for this uh, product that we just added in, it would duplicate it. Its new name would be title copy. I can then go into it and edit it and make the one or two adjustments to it and create a brand new product without having to retype in all the information that I had already typed in for this one. So another handy tool. I hope you've uh, enjoyed this quick introduction to the Concrete 5 e-commerce uh, product dashboard. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us at Pixel Web Design and Strategy. Have a good day and thank you.